Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this wee mindfulness session. This is something that I've been doing up in the Old Library Trust. Um, we did for Mental Health Week in January, and then I did it with a lovely bunch of ladies um, on Jonathan's program um, for the Clear Project. So today we're just going to concentrate on our breathing um, as a way to develop mindfulness. Um, and you can do it anywhere. You can do it sitting in your chair. You can do it lying on top of the bed. Um, you decide what, what's best for you. Now, one of the things I try to do is I try to create a nice space. So this is my office. But as you can see over here, I've created, there's, you know, my candle, my flowers, um, my nice photographs. So try and make your space um, as nice as you possibly can. Um, if your bedroom suits you better, that's fine. Um, sometimes lowering the curtains so you can concentrate. Closing your eyes as well can really um, help you. So one of the things that um, I'd like us to concentrate today is basically our breathing. Okay. And a lot of us actually just do breathing from the top of our chest, right? Um, and sometimes you see, um, you know, we children when when they um, are upset and they are trying to tell you something and they're <laughs> like that, right? So that's because they're breathing from the top of their chest. Now, children naturally breathe from their diaphragm, from their belly, right? When I talk about my diaphragm, it's, an, it's like my belly. Um and it's because they've started to breathe from the top of their chest that they can't get something out. So I would always, if it was my son, I would have held his hands and I would have said, just breathe, breathe, breathe. And then he was able then to tell me what was wrong with him. Um, so as we get older, we learn bad habits. We don't breathe from our diaphragms. And uh, that's really, um, you know, not as beneficial to support our system. Um, because we're not using the top of the lungs, we're not using all of the lungs. Um, when we're doing um, the breathing, I'll do a wee session about how we're lengthening the breath, right? So that really means then we're getting rid of all the stale air and we're bringing in lovely fresh air and, uh, you know, fresh oxygen into our bodies. And we need that oxygen. We need it to, um, to um, nourish the organs all around um, you know, they're lying in that belly region. Um, but it also helps to lower blood pressure. It helps with pain. It can also help with, um, like, your anxiety and your mood. Um, it brings our attention to our emotions as well. Um, and we learn that actually... Our emotions are, 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 they just come and go. They're transient. They come and go. Um, only we can give power to those emotions if we let those emotions in the door. So only we can do that. Um, so this really teaches you to let those emotions go. Yes, to acknowledge them. Not to judge yourself. It's worth acceptance, that, that key part. Bringing your attention to the present moment without, you know, judgment. With acceptance. Okay, um, so this morning I would like to just concentrate on, on diaphragm breathing, right? And this wee expandable ball was introduced to me by Claire Harkin, who's a, a dance practitioner that we work with, and it's the greatest wee thing. So, most of the time when, when we're breathing, and we kind of go like that. So we're only breathing from the top of our chest. We're not breathing from our diaphragm. We're not filling our bellies. We're not using the whole of the lungs. Okay, so when you're breathing in, your belly should expand. When you're breathing out, your belly should go in. Breathing in, breathing out. So for some people, it's almost back to front when I do this with grips of ten. Oh gosh, that's that's really back to front from what I, I normally do. As I said, um, if you do it lying on top of your bed, some people do find that much easier because it can really concentrate. You know, you can put your hands on your belly. So 
So my belly's rising now because I'm breathing in. It's going in because I'm breathing out. So as I say, it's almost back to front for some people. So if you just sit or lie, whatever you're comfortable with, and just begin. And if I, if my breathing is um, too slow for you, if you can't, you know, say you've COPD or whatever, um, and you find that difficult, you just do it at your own pace. But what you will find is you will start to expand it. Even if it's only for half a breath or whatever, which is, is much better because then that, that starts to calm the heart, lowers the blood pressure, etc. Okay, so breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. So close your eyes and let's see, can we go for a minute or two? If breathing out through your mouth is easier, that's okay too. Sometimes people like to breathe in through their nose and out through their mouth. Whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. If you find the thoughts start to come into your head, push them out with that outward breath. Just Push them out. Other people like to visualize that thought. They might put it on a cloud and see it float away. Tie it to a balloon and float away. Sometimes I, I find, you know, when I was very stressed and I couldn't sleep at night, um, my saying to myself, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. I am breathing in, I am breathing out, I am breathing in, I am breathing out, was the only thing that actually got rid of my thoughts, I had terrible recent thoughts at night, I was caring for my mommy and she wasn't well and my thoughts were just, I should have done this, I should have done that, why didn't I say this, why didn't I say that, you know, when I was coming to her care, and I would beat myself up every night and this I am breathing in, I am breathing out help to calm, calm my heart rate help my breathing to regulate and then actually I was able to actually go to sleep so or it might be a word the lovely Karen, when she did stuff with us up at OLT, she used the word rainbow. So something that, that works for you. It's, it's really up to you. Everyone's an individual. We're all unique. We all find ways that really work for us. So if you've kept that up now with me, you've done over three minutes, actually, believe it or not. So well done if you've done that. And what I would say to you is just set your timer. It could be an egg timer, it could be on your phone, it could be on the microwave, wherever you are. Okay? And just do that. Even set it for two minutes. Try not to, you know, open your eyes and look at your clock. Keep your eyes closed. And before you know it, you'll be up to five minutes or even ten minutes. And the thing is, we're really bombarded with information at the moment. And that information sometimes can, you know, relieve us. You know, we can feel relief through it. Or sometimes, you know, what generally does happen is that it makes us actually more anxious. 
far more anxious. So it's like turn off your phone, turn off your TV. And even if you do this for five or ten minutes a day, um, just to give yourself a wee bit of respite actually from all that information and just, just to concentrate on your breath. And as I say, if those thoughts come in, let, you know, just, they're just thoughts. They're just thoughts. Let them go. Just let them go. Breathe them out. Put them on a cloud. Say, I am breathing in. I am breathing out. Whatever works for you. Okay. And I will see over the next few weeks and I'll start to introduce other wee things that will help as well. So well done if you've joined in. And uh, just try and set some time aside every day and uh, keep safe. Take care.